Hello, it's Robert Nelson again, talking with Jessica Sola, um, and this time about uh, the big idea that the university represents. Yeah, hi. Um, <clears throat> but sorry, when you say the big deal, I mean, were you thinking of research? Yes, or, or its nexus with learning and teaching. Oh, that's good, because um, it's, it's obscure to a lot of us. I mean, for sure, research is a big deal, and the research buzz of the place attracted me to Monash, yeah, yeah, but good, good. why do you want to sort of squeeze re research into orientation where the tasks at hand are to prepare coursework and degree? <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. Um, sure, in, in coursework degrees, we aren't making a claim to um, generating new knowledge, um, which is, you know, the, the, the common definition of research. We don't have the stress of finding out something new, which is, you know, the, the, both the agony and the joy of research. Um, but a research intensive university still wants to introduce research concepts through the degree. Um, research isn't just for the lecturers, but the students as well. Okay, so you were showing me some sort of elaborate table to set out how research feeds yeah. into sort of... Teaching and learning, yeah, yes, that's yeah. right, that's right. We're, we're trying to f uh, follow a framework developed in Adelaide called the Researcher Skill Development Framework. It's a grid where the left side of the matrix goes down in a sequence of greater depth. You begin determined where you find and generate stuff. You progress to discerning where you evaluate and reflect on what's important, I guess. Then you go to harmonising, which is about how you organise and manage information. Deeper down, you come to creative, where uh, you analyse and synthesise material. And, and the last term on the rubric is constructive, which is where you communicate and apply material. Ah, that's it, yeah. So that's the, the cells going down the page. Down the page, yes. Right, that's the headers for... The, the headers going across, across the page, page. yes, right. yes. Yeah, um, there are five levels which are really about how autonomous you are as, uh, you know, how, how independent you are. So level one is uh, oh, okay. prescribed okay. research where they're telling you what to find out. Uh, level two is a bounded research. Level three, scaffolded research. Then student-initiated research. And then five, open research. Sounds very comprehensive. Are all students expected to know this? Uh, no, um, it's for the lecturers, but it shows how thoroughly they want to embed research practices into curricula. Uh -huh. You don't sound too convinced. <laughs> no, no, I, I credit the intention and, and I like the way that there's a narrative in there where we go from being directed in, in what, what in to what find, to out, find out, out to yeah. sort of exploring yes. for ourselves yes. what we want to find out. I mean... That's, that's a great transi transition. But what, you, you think there's, uh, that something simple is made too complicated? Uh, maybe from a student perspective, uh, it seems a bit sort of, I don't know, bureaucratised mm. or to, to be... Yeah, to be of much use. Yeah, 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 I mean, five across the five Five down, down yeah. Let's make 25 five cells. <laughs> you guys are sort of, it's a great checklist that you guys are... Yeah, doing. tying ourselves up in knots with... Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, 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 I mean, the intention uh, is really just to encourage research rather than to control teaching, I think. Uh, okay, so it's about uh, value systems, and I think I'm coming to... You're coming, coming from it from somewhere else. From somewhere yeah, else. Right. You feel you have another perspective, then. That must be accommodated somewhere on the table and must form part of research. <laughs> I, um, I've had the opportunity to study Australian Indigenous culture and... Um, which is maybe the least tabulated in the world. Yeah. I mean, where the idea of creating, creating a, a knowledge framework is a bit... Uh, yeah, along two axes. It's kind of alien. Yeah. And yet, I guess, you know, it's power, uh, Indigenous culture is powerfully driven by imagination. And I'm in awe of what Indigenous artists come up with. And they're among the most fertile visual inventions that the world's ever seen and always original, always with a relationship between place and being and always reinventing themselves. Mm, and none of it comes from a table. None of it comes from a table. So it comes from a whole cosmology, doesn't it, that narrates country in stories. Understanding it, let alone handling its narratives inventively, is research of a high order. Uh, so Indigenous ways of knowing are a bit different. I mean, Aboriginal elders and um, end up as a kind of live archive comprising what you could think of as a, as a massive re repository of, of stories, topographies and, and wisdom out of which they can create rich and vibrant things, as you say. But it's always also about sort of teaching and learning. Indigenous culture is, is profoundly, uh, 
profound in it. In About listening. listening and, gentle yeah. listening. Yeah. Gentle listening. Uh, so it, the, the elders have a special role in that because they've been listening to many other great listeners. And I wish we could take on some of that pedagogy, actually, where knowledge is narrated in an enchanted way with art and song. Mm. It involves a different worldview where the interest in looking at something isn't to measure it, but to recognise its meaning, its place in a, in a narrative, in a geography, in a life cycle. We contemplate some of that relativity in Moho. Um, it's almost as if one of the gifts of Indigenous culture is simply that it provides us with another perspective of seeing the world. Remind me what Moho is. I, I agree with your point, by the way. Yeah, uh, MOHO stands for Monash Orientation for Higher Objectives. It's a leadership program open to any Monash student. It's about becoming a public intellectual and is built around the issues like uh, sustainability, well-being, social inclusion, and it includes Indigenous culture. Uh, it sounds good, but sorry, I, I distracted you. Oh, no, 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 you no. were saying about Indigenous culture giving us critical perspective of the world. Yeah, yeah. When I've thought about traditional Indigenous ways, they appear in my imagination as a kind of critique of our globalised contemporary reality. Quite a confronting critique. Right. Like how? Well, you were implying that we um, expect to understand things by measuring them. And I'd add that globalised culture is based on competition and marketing, materialism, which we take for granted. Like, who can sell more goods and services and establish prestige in markets? Mm, mm. If you put it that way, globalised culture would just sort of be international capitalism. From the individual to the corporation to the country, we're all locked into a struggle to sell things and to teach one another to want things. So, so a cross-cultural perspective is, is valuable for forming a critique? Yeah, I, I think so. I'm necessary. Well, it's, it's also one of your graduate <laughs> attributes, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. It's the one um, that, you're, that you remembered earlier um, that says that students should exhibit cross-cultural competence. I suppose that means competence over cross-cultural ideas as much as people. Yeah, but, I mean, don't forget the people either. Um, all these theories are worthy, but it's really valuable to make contact with Indigenous people and have a conversation and get their views rather than making up our own construction. I take your point and we can do that at our university which has um, a, um, a vibrant centre for Australian Indigenous Studies. Right, yep, yeah. and also the Yulund Indigenous um, Engagement Unit, Robert, everything that we want begins with conversation. Thanks, Jessica. My pleasure.